And at the end of that season, I'll never forget. It was the bottom of the seventh. There were two outs. A man at first, a big, ugly man. A man at second, a pretty boy with no speed. We were down by a run. I was up. All I needed was a hit. Oh, no! I hit it to the medic and sorry, pop my feet! And as the ball came down like a dead canary, I thought it was going to bring the big blue sky with it. Right then and there, I made a commitment. I'd go to the end of the earth if I had to. I'd search and search for the softball gods, if there were any. And I wouldn't come back until I had all the answers. At first, I hid in the brush like a dodo bird, learning patience and eye coordination skills. Slowly as my confidence came, I would attack mm. giant boulders, lifting mm. and heaving them, mm. developing my yes. explosive power. I even honed my accuracy. On the money, baby. I noticed my agility and speed were becoming awesome. Dinner. It must have been the protein. Anyway, all that's behind me now. I have returned, heart fired up, and I'm ready to play! <laughs> Ultimate Softball, alternative programming for the softball fanatic is brought to you by DeMarini Custom Bats. Now you've got the distance. Hanson Sports, makers of the Wrist Pro Wrist Protector, and by Strongren Supports. They came from Sacramento, from Stockton, and from the Bay Area. They came from all over California to play in... Modesto. Modesto? Well, Modesto is about uh, 60 miles east of San Francisco Bay Area in a rural Central Valley community. Why Modesto? Well, this is a softball hot spot for sure. Son! You triple SA. No control! Ah! We, we've got some outstanding players uh, with a lot of power. World implications. Controversy! Control! How can you do that? Is this a tee ball? Let me put on tee. Today, the uh, highest finishing A team will get a uh, world tournament for. Desire! Hey, here we are in uh, Northern California in the land of monsters. Charlie Rose, one of the best teams in the country in Northern California. Modesto. What are you talking into? What is it? Tell me, quick. This is Julie Smith. She plays second base a lot better than she understands Hollywood. <laughs> now stay with us. When we come back, we're going to have ultimate softball challenge. Lots of information, lots of fun, lots of high tension action. Stay tuned. <laughs> People ask me, how do you get ready for a game? The best way to get ready for a game is to take some batting practice, do some sprinting, get loose, do whatever you got to do. You got to be ready to play. Get that adrenaline rolling, get some endorphins going in your head. Of course, sometimes you don't have a field. You don't have any place to practice. So just do whatever you got to do to get loose. Here's how I do it. <laughs> You God! <laughs> New strategy. <laughs> Thank you! Winner. Now I'm ready to hit. Now I'm ready to go to bed. Now I'm washed up. I'm tired. I'm old. 
but I won. Hi, I'm Julie Smith with Dudley on D. Okay, we're here with Pete Turner. He's a great defensive player on the United States national team. He plays all positions on the field, and he's going to give us some tips today. Pete, glad to have you here. Pleasure to be here. All right. Uh, you, I understand you can play first, third, outfield, catcher. What are you, all-around dude, huh? Well, that's, I guess that's my claim to fame is I can play several positions, and I play them okay. And what a first baseman's biggest problem is, and I've, and I've seen this a lot, is they stretch too soon. And what happens you stretch too soon, if I get a, a bad throw from one of my infielders, my range of motion is limited, as you can see here. So what we want to talk about today is improving the footwork of a first baseman. Basically, a first baseman should square his shoulders from where he's getting the throw, be it second base, shortstop, third base, or even the pitcher. And also in the catcher if something's out in front of the plate. Once I square my shoulders to that middle infielder and that person makes the throw to me, I determine where the throw is going to be. Now if the throw is to my right, my footwork is simply to step and slide. And as you can see, I've increased my range of motion by six, seven feet, depending on how large I am or how short I am. Again, if the throw is to the inside, I simply move to the inside, increasing my range of motion. Julie, one of the other common problems that a first baseman has is getting to the bag. Many times, you're back behind the bag playing your position, a ground ball is hit to one of the infielders. People have a tendency to run, look at the infielder, and then try to find the bag. And they're searching, hunt and peck, as we call it. The proper technique for going to the bag on, a, on an infield ground ball is to simply look at the bag, go to the direction, the quickest direction to the bag, find it, and again, square your shoulders up to your infielder. Proper footwork from that point on is, is to, to make sure that your foot that you're using, be it sliding left or sliding right, is on the inside portion of the bag. By all means, you want to prevent injury from you and the, from you and the runner by having your foot on the top of the bag. To prevent injury and to get a chance and have a chance to get that out, when you go up for the throw, you're extended and you're in a vulnerable position. You're off the bag, simply come down into the pace path, relax your arm, you will tag the runner and go with the throw. Do not tense up and lock in to a, to a position where you can cause injury. Pete, at first base, what types of things do you think about as part of the game? When you're playing first base, you need to know what kind of diamond you're playing on, how far the fence is away from you, and if I can or cannot take chances on a, on a throw from one of my infielders. A good example of that would be if I have no runners on base and I have a throw coming from my shortstop and I see it maybe off a, a little bit offline, am I going to take a chance and stretch as we talked about earlier and try to get the out? I probably will because another good tip for that is to get my first my catcher involved and backing me up. So if I know he's backing me up and there's no one on base, he's going to stop any throw that's going to get through me. So I can take the chances uh, to, to go for the out. Now if a runner's on second base, my catcher's not going to be there, and I'm not going to take a chance of bobbling the ball and the ball get by me to score a run. So I'm going to have a, a, a different defensive posture than I would if, I, if no one was on base. <laughs> Were well, you going to do a little thing on nutrition, Cornell? What the heck is this? This is state-of-the-art linguiça, grilled, split top, <laughs> with tomatoes, pickles, and barbecue sauce on a bun. Mm -hmm. Nothing better for a softball player at 160 pounds who's trying to move up to double A. <laughs> You're going to have to eat about six cases of those things that moves up to double A. Well, after I eat this and I go back and have a hot dog, and then I have my marshmallow treats in between, <laughs> while they're cooking more linguiça, I'll be okay. Now, do you think this is healthy? About as healthy as it's going to get out here. <laughs> <laughs> okay, now remember, when you go to bat, be relaxed. Let your body do its job. Don't be gripping the bat real tight. Be relaxed. It'll be good for about five miles an hour in bat speed. It's like you gain 20 pounds of body weight. You'll hit the ball harder. Do it.
Welcome to Losers Bracket, it's a bitch. Now this is Red Mickey Mouse. Red Wine no. Grill here now. <laughs> got Link, got Red, Mobile Ball and Grill. Well, uh, we're from Oakland. Name of the team is Come Ready. Uh, last year we had a mediocre year. Year before that we were pretty good. And we're put, putting it back together. Um, we had a pretty good preseason and now we're out here trying to do good things. Um, we hope to do well in this tournament. We play in Vegas week after next, so this is kind of like a precursor for that. We dropped the first one. In fact, it was quite embarrassing, but uh, we look at that as getting it out the way as our first game of this season. You know, we're going to get it out the way and, and move on from here. So um, nothing wrong with coming through from the loser's bracket. Nothing wrong at all. Now, the Sultan of Squat. <laughs> I mean, the Sultan of Squat. With your ultimate hitting tips, Ray DiMarini. You know, there's only one place you can get the perfect swing, and that's right in the exact zone, your number one power zone, which for me and probably most people is somewhere like right right here. I mean, so if the pitch is like right there, say waist high right here, sure, yeah, you can have a beautiful swing with your arms all extended, head down, everything's great. The only trouble is this is the real world, and no pitcher is going to give you that pitch. When you get that perfect pitch, you never, never, never let that ball go by. You jump on it and hurt it. But you're not going to get that pitch, and then what are you going to do? I'll tell you right now what you're going to do is you've got to make adjustments. Your swing is like multifaceted. There's many different adjustments that you have to make, and I like to look at it as a target. And where I just showed you my power zone is, which is right there, that would be my bullseye. And you got another circle around it, another circle around it, another circle around it. That encompasses your strike zone. Hmm. Pretty cool. Anyway, uh, if the pitch is in that second circle, on the inside of that second circle, you can't, if you have that same swing that I had on my absolute perfect swing, the pitch is going to be over here. So you have to compensate by stepping out that way. If the pitches on the outside of the second circle, you're going to have to go over here. You're going to have to step this way to go get the pitch. If the pitch is short, you're going to go, you have to go down and get it. You've got to lengthen your stride and go down and get the pitch. Otherwise, you're just going to slap at the ball like that. So you've got to take a longer stride to go get the ball. If the pitch is deep, you can't take hardly any stride because if you take a long stride and the pitch is deep, how are you going to hit it? You cannot hit the ball. So what I'm trying to say is you have all these adjustments that you have to make. And that's why batting practice is so important because your body has to learn the location that it needs to place itself in order to hit the ball as hard as you can given the situation that you have. But there is a common denominator in every swing and that is to keep your body as closed as you can. It's more important than having an arm extension because on an inside pitch that's really inside, especially if you crowd in the plate, you're not going to be able to have too much arm extension. Oh, beautiful. He got that ball right between third and short. Notice he went and got the ball. Notice how his foot is completely closed. His body is pivoted around. He is no longer stepping at the pitcher at the first base side. He's stepping at third base with his front foot, and that's where the ball goes. Ooh, yes, there you go. Freeze frame that right there, and you'll see that he went, he's got an inordinately long stride on that particular swing. Hit the ball, you don't see where the ball went, but it went about 350 feet, and it did because he went and got the ball. He took a long stride and to enable the bat head to get on the ball because the ball was short. See, that ball's up in his eyes. He still hits it 350, but with a completely different swing back to the question. Is there a perfect swing? There isn't a perfect swing. I mean, it's a, it's a game of adjustments. You've got to make adjustments. He just made an adjustment for a high pitch. You can see that he hasn't taken anywhere near as much of a stride, and his body is much more upright in this frame than it was on that low, short pitch, which he had to get his body real low and go get the ball. On this one, he's staying much more upright, and he's got a shorter stride. He has to, or he wouldn't be able to hit the ball. That's the common denominator. Keep yourself closed because that's where your po power comes from is the rotational forces of your body. And if you're closed, you're going to get maximum rotation. If you're open, you're going to get no rotation. Stay closed. 
uh, this grass is like perfect, especially in the outfield. I mean, it's like flat and short. It's great. Thanks. Uh, we, well, we've got kind of a background in uh, golf courses, and we try to keep these things kind of like a fairway. I notice this is pretty much the best tasting grass I've ever eaten too. What, what do you do to make this taste that good? Uh, do I don't know. I <laughs> okay, Mark, I got you. There's a weed. Actually, that's a, that's an annual bluegrass. We we do kind of think of it as a weed, but but it is a grass. Cigarette butt, no weed. Here we are at the ultimate challenge where we're going to have Mikey Rodriguez, come on in here Mike, against our guy, Gary Fisher. Ooh, this some, I think we got some bad blood developing. Mm, shake hands and come out slugging, baby. Brand new Dudley ball. It doesn't have a chance. There's one! Get that bus! <laughs> Not bad. My fault, Mike. Oh. Top spin. Yes. Woo! That's over the lights, over the bus. Mike's two for five. Gary up. There's one. There's a nice one. Is that all you got? 3,000 pounds and you hit it like that? <laughs> there you go. Two for four, he's gotta hit this one out to win. <laughs> Gets the bus, hits a homer. One of the primary focuses of our show is injury prevention, and we have Dick Christ here from uh, Stromgren Sports Protection, and he has a line of uh, compression shorts that we're going to discuss today, and Dick, you know, I wear these, I wear them at the gym, I wear them at, when I'm playing ball, they seem to do a fantastic job, but I have no idea, what, why do they work, what are they doing, why do I feel so good in them? Well, you probably wear them to make yourself look better. I would guess because they are a fashion statement. I can't make myself look better. <laughs> <laughs> now, the, I think the, the important thing about compression pants, compression shorts, that a lot of people who wear these don't realize, just like yourself, they do primarily two things. One is to enhance the performance. Mm -hmm. And I think when you wear these, you probably feel like you are stronger. You know, more Dick, power. I swear to you, it seems like I can run faster when I wear them. And I know, you know, people would laugh at that, but that's how I feel. They feel like they can make me run faster. Well, I think they do. Uh, enhanced performance, and the other thing is really to help prevent injuries. Now, I would think the bottom line, too, would be less injuries, maybe protect your hamstrings a little bit. Exactly. Uh, probably the most common injury that, that a lot of runners, a lot of athletes has, uh, uh, have is uh, hamstring pulls. Yeah. And this helps keep those muscles in line. It helps uh, keep them tighter. Yeah. Uh, so that you don't have those, those uh, hamstring pulls. Yeah, and in this sport, it's an explosive sport. You know, you're running, you're going from a dead stop to full speed and um, uh, I think that Hamstring injuries as well as groin injuries are probably the, as common an injury as you get in this sport. In addition to that, I, I believe you have some sliding shorts. Now, are these true compression as well? Yes, these are also true compression shorts. We make these out of the same material, the 25-75 lycra nylon mix, as we do the other, other compression pants. But these are sliding shorts because we have a, a quilted pad on the inside. Can you make something like that for my chest and my big beak here so I can protect <laughs> it sliding head first? Uh, you know, we could. I think probably something a little bit heavier for your, for your beak. <laughs> Thank you, Dick. <laughs> Dick, this is great information. Where can the folks get these shorts? 
You can find the shorts at uh, most retailers around the country, uh, sporting goods, individual sporting goods dealers and team dealers, as well as uh, many of the, the national chains around the country. Plus, another thing, if, if you can't find them, you can always call our 800 number in Schrompen and we can Great. tell you exactly where to, where to get them. Okay, it's seven, eight batters before you're up. What do you do? You just sit in the dugout and wait till you hit? No. You give the guy at bat some positive encouragement. You don't tell him, don't pop up, you do all that stuff. Tell him positive stuff. They can't get you out. You crush the ball. Nobody's better than you. You just can't believe what that does for the hitter. He will hear that stuff. And he'll say, my men are behind me, or women, or whoever you are. Do it. Hey, let's break a heart right here. Let's go, guys, right now. Ultimate Softball's Player of the Week is Andy Alvis of Dan Smith Easton. This guy hit a, a ball at the UAAA World Series in Daytona that nobody could hit one out playing on a 380-foot fence baseball field, Jackie Robinson Stadium. He hit one over the center field fence against the wind. What is the story with that swing? Well, Eastern products, I guess. Here's the thing about Andy. This guy is the best bad ball hitter in the sport of slow pitch softball. He don't care where you pitch it, over his head, down at his shorts, up in his ear. He don't care. I'm not kidding you. You cannot throw the ball by this guy if he decides he wants to hit it out. It don't matter where you pitch it. How do you do it? Well, it's, uh, it's a game of fun. Hard ball background. I was uh, kind of a swing, free swinger too. And I see the ball and hit it. Simple game. Slow pitch. Game's heating up now! Everybody's getting a little excited here! No, sir. Yes, it did. This is you trying to say. That wasn't fast. It's top of seven, 17-16. The hitters are in front, Charlie Rose. They've got to score three or four to put the pressure on that other team because in the bottom of the seventh, they're going to come back. The pressure's on right now. Boom! That's through! That's a nice job. Hustle, Ronnie. All right, all right. Uh, here we go, here we go. Bring the heart right here. Let's go, guys, right now. Mikey, nice job. Yeah. Oh! Let's <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> watch him puke. I'm a coach. I don't care what you are, you're nervous. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not playing, so it doesn't matter. <laughs> Game. Oh, nice effort. Watch, go to third. You got first and third. You got two outs. The game's on the line, bottom of the seventh. This guy gets a hit, They're, they got a good chance. They popped him up, they won. In this weekend's action, the Richmond Merchants rose from the loser's bracket to defeat Charlie Rose twice and capture the U-Triple-S-A World Bird. The Dudley MVP award goes to Nick Capsolaris of the Richmond Merchants. Thank you for joining us for this week's edition of Ultimate Softball. We're here in Modesto, California. See you next time in Atlanta, Georgia. 450 teams. They play all day. They play all night. We'll be there. Here we come. Woo wee! Ultimate Softball has been brought to you by DeMarini Custom Bats. Now you've got the distance. And by Hanson Sports, makers of the Wrist Pro Wrist Protector, and by Stronggren Supports. Be 
with us next time for the world's biggest slow pitch tournament, the Flag City Shootout. 711 teams, over 10,000 players on fields from Atlanta to Macon and Savannah will bust it out big time. God, you're nasty for a pretty girl. <laughs>